Welcome to SC Custom Designs, where we are on part, I forgot, uh, um, creating octagon shells. So I have two shells that are, are sanded, this being one of them, or the, uh, the coarse and the medium sanding, and we have to do that fine sanding. And so uh, what I wanted to point out the fact that as I step away, this is the first time the sun is shining inside my shop. I wish I could take the camera off the mount, but I know better. Um, so let's just try to zoom in here and see if we can see that sun. It's so glorious. Just sort of blends in there anyways. So, all right, I uh, want to just talk uh, through quickly. This is going to be a quick video, so if you're an old-time sander, this is not the video for you. If you've just started to sand things, um, then hopefully you'll have some tips. Um, so... Before we even talk about sanding, though, it's stuck way down. Um, you want to talk about what you don't want to sand, and that's the inside of a thing. Uh, so when you're gluing up, you want to make sure you get that glue completely out of this area, or you will regret it. Um, I think, I don't know what the averages are, the percentages of sanding time, but trust me when I tell you. Um, you spend a lot of time sanding, and you're going to either hate or love it. I choose to not really get onto one of those extremes. Just I know that that's what I need to do. So, all right, let's zoom back out. Again, you're on SD Custom Designs, and we are once again thrilled. I feel like I need to turn a few lights out so I can show you that sun coming into my wood shop. Those of you who are uh, living in the Northeast... Um, really anywhere on the planet where you have to put up with no natural light in your shop when it comes in. It's like a beautiful, beautiful thing. So there it is, my friends. SC Custom Design is getting that first that's the sunset uh, for us. So so excited about that. I'm going to turn the lights back on. Um, we're talking about sanding, so Light is a big subject um, and something that you want to consider having a lot of when you're sanding. Oh, forgot to turn this around. Let's see here. There we go. Uh, while you're sanding. So, uh, what I want to do is bring over um, this one so you can get a better idea of uh, what it looks like. Let's get the LEDs on the subject. So when you're sanding, you want to have as much light as possible so that you can see. Uh, otherwise, what you wouldn't see, for example, the, uh, the swirlies, if you use a sander like this, which is my main sander at this point. Uh, this, this is poplar wood. Um, so if it were pine, I don't know that I would want to use a, one of these. I might just want to go straight across with with this guy. So this is one of the newer uh, additions to the wood shop. It's a long soft handle uh, sander that is uh, Velcro. So I had used the, the ones that are about half this size uh, up till now. Then I saw these in the store. I was like, yeah, yeah, baby. All right, so let's just try to get some of the idea of what it looks like. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't line the grain up. That would have been nice if I would have slowed down enough to figure that out at the time that it wasn't lined up. But uh, it's still pretty beautiful. Um, another sanding tip, if you're sa whatever you're sanding on, make sure there's no glue, like there's glue right here. You'll sand a project and you'll come away and say, I swear I sanded that. And you're going to see um, issues. So this is the one that hasn't been uh, sanded yet. So we have the glue that we have to get off of uh, this guy here. Trying to get just the right light there. So you can see that glue. i got to get that off. So you want to minimize any of the glue. Now at, at first what I did is I took a chisel. And uh, everything's reversed in the camera. <laughs> so I took a chisel and I was chiseling off some of the wood. And you know that can be a dangerous endeavor 
Um, you know, mind you, this is not a piece of furniture. You can argue that it kind of is. It's a hexagon shelf. But you, so you certainly don't want to have gouges in there. Okay? So, there you go. When you're sanding, you, um, when I was doing the super awesome coffee table uh, that is now in the customer's office, and they're very pleased. Everybody who sees that unit is very pleased. I'm super pleased to always hear that. It never gets old that people love your projects, does it? Woodworkers. Um, so yeah, the glue that's down there is going to put little wormy holes or little wor looks like little worms came across your uh, project. So uh, if if I didn't have enough space where there wasn't any glue, I can always put down a yoga mat. That's another sanding tip. I have a yoga mat. I'll be right back. That I can put down. And like I said, when I did the use the super awesome when I was making the super awesome office table, this guy was down at all times. Okay, so I didn't need any problems. So, what you're going to want to do when you're sanding is think about the, the beginning and the ending of the story, the sanding story. And by the way, if you're new to woodworking and you don't know how to price a thing, um, let's say if let's say the materials in, in this hexagon shelf was I don't know, you know, two dollars. Um, so you've, you've got that price into it. You've got all your materials, the glue. Uh, you got the sandpaper that you're going through. That didn't come free to your woodshop, did it? You had to buy that. Um, and even this tool here, any tool you're using, um, you need to build the price into those that don't have these tools because they're not making the things. Um, and then there's your skill sets, uh, such as the 30 degree angles that I have into the, into these, uh, hexagon, these he three hexagon shelves. So what I wanted to show you, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but is, uh, we're, we're talking about putting the, uh, Shelix, uh, see if I can get this. We're talking about getting the Shelix, um, cutter head, uh, replacement cutter head. We did a review on that. Please look that up. Uh, the pros and the cons, mostly pros when it comes to, uh, let's move this camera a little bit. I really want you to see this. Um, let's see if I can pull it off. There's, there's little lines, there's lines in here that um, are running this way. And they came from um, the metal blade. I got a three blade dual uh, steel blades. And uh, I changed the second time around, I'm changing them. Um, I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I already see lines in, in here. So they're very faint. I apologize. I won't know till I'm reviewing the video if I can actually see those lines. But trust me when I tell you, there's, there's lines coming through. Easy enough to sand off. It's not a problem. But why have that issue to begin with? So I am definitely sold. You can see I'm sold. I got the Shelix in my wood shop. Watch that review, please. Uh, the tools that you're going to need um, when for that, for that project. So there you go. Oops. I'm going to sell here. Um, move that over a little bit. Oh man, I, t I tell you what, there's the sun again. Am I crazy? Well, I do live in the Northeast and we, we know what that's like. You just don't get the, the sun that out. So I'm just really celebrating. Um, what else can we say about sanding? Um, in, in this case, uh, we're, we're just a quick review. We're using this to rough sand it, and then we have a couple different grits there. Then I take this long bed, and I have uh, 220. I have 120 and then 220. This is a 600 grit, and um, that's going to really drive the project home when you uh, use a, a 600 grit paper like this. It makes it uh, very, very, very smooth. So that's that. Um, and then we have to decide um, if there's going to be a next episode um, or two. It's going to be, do we want to put a nice soft um, router edge on the outside? And um, I'm saying just the outside because you're going to want all the shelf room that's in there to be used for shelf. And if you round off the edges um, here, then you're, 
kind of losing real estate. Now, this is five and a half inches, and if I routered that, you know, you'd have to be maybe more careful with what you're going to put in there. So that's definitely a consideration. All right. So, but I am toying around with uh, putting a nice router, soft router uh, edge to clean that out there. But not on the back, of course. The back is going to go against the wall, right? And so you're going to want that to be really, really flat. So, I don't know. These are the things I'm toying with. And I'm probably going to be using um, uh, oil, like a tongue oil, uh, for this project here. So, the beauty about the tongue oil is uh, it, you, there's no rush in putting it on. You can literally just rub it on and not worry about the, the types of things that can't happen if you've not ever finished a thing before. You'll learn uh, that when you're staining, and, and uh, you got to move right along. You can't stop, and you can't drip, and you can't sag the material on it. Um, let's say, for example, I just I got a sponge or whatever it is, or a foam brush, whatever you're using, a cloth, and you uh, are putting the stain here. We got a little bit, there, a, a drop there. That's going to start soaking in almost immediately. And that becomes your first coat. Then you go to put the first coat on, right? Now you got two coats where that is. So that's one way of thinking about that when you're putting on the finish. And um, I was uh, talking about, you know, what you should charge. Don't undercharge yourself when you're doing, putting all this work into it. But I tell the customers, if you're going to finish this, then you're going to pay one third less the price. So that's a lot of our time that we take to finish a thing, isn't it? And you know you're worth your uh, your time. So, so plus not everybody can finish a thing. There's there's tips that I picked up through the years when I was a painter full time, um, doing houses, did three houses a day, did all aspects of painting. So I, I kind of know what I'm talking about there. Um, so you know there's a skill set that's involved. Some folks are just talented. They they get it right away. And so good for you. So that's going to save you time. Um, when I first started out, I would finish a thing and then I'd give the price and they would, the customer would say like, uh, well, that's so pretty. It's very nice, but they're not putting any money in your hands. They're just saying your project was nice and they walk away. And, um, so that's not what you want. <laughs> you gotta think about all that, how much time you're putting into, uh, finishing things. So, all right. Um, that's pretty much a quick episode. Thanks for coming into the shop of SC Castle Designs. And um, please uh, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell, and you'll be reminded, not reminded, I informed that a video came out, and such as this one. So I'm going to say goodbye in my five languages, Shalom Avakha, Hebrew, Masalami, the Arabic, Tulsin, Afrikaans, Tachin, and Mandarin. And how do we say it in America? See you later, baby. All right. Thanks for watching.